flight paths, shaders, height maps, dragging bodies. All these things are on upcoming patches. What am I most excited about? Well, it's not one of those. You'll have to tune in to find out. I think I did a good job on my new intro. It's weird when you do these videos and from time to time you have a hard drive failure. And sometimes the hard drive failure can make your life just miserable. And sometimes it could force you back to the drawing board. And although that title looks and sounds a lot like the one I've been using lately, it's actually a combination of my original title with that theme song and some new elements in it, and I hope you like it. So this week we're going to look at a couple of things that are in the roadmap. I'm not going to move around the screen a lot so you see everything I'm talking about. Star Citizen sometimes could be considered the red-headed stepchild of the gaming industry for those people that don't play the game. Because on the outside they're looking in, and they don't really see the parts of the game that we love so much because they refuse to play it. For those of us that do play the game, we find a lot of things inside of Star Citizen that we just absolutely love to do. And I think it's the emergent gameplay that we all love the most. When all out battles just erupt in front of one of the outposts, or you get with your org mates and you go and you take over, say, Korea or one of the other security outposts, or you just go on a bad day, you know, you have a bad day, do a bunch of bad things and wind up in prison and then take over the boxing ring and have some boxing matches. The gameplay in Star Citizen is the gameplay that you create. And I do want to throw this out there because I'm an avid flight sim fan. So right now we have more places to fly than most flight sims do. I mean, we don't have as many airports, spaceports, whatever you want to call it, but we do have three amazing planets to fly around, a whole bunch of moons, we have space stations to go to, and it's just a great time that you could have. Inside of my days of being a flight simmer, I'll get in an aircraft and I'll fly from point A to point B, and I've done that so many times and it it gets boring after a while for some people, but I still enjoy it. I'm one of those people. And to make my flight sim experience better, I could buy certain add-ons. I could buy more aircraft, buy more ships in Star Citizen, buy more aircraft for my, my flight sim. I could buy more scenery, so I have actual beautiful scenery to fly through. So there's there's this element of always having to build new things. I have weather generators and sky um, graphics, you know, graphics that improve the look and feel of the sky and the atmosphere that you're flying through. These are all things that I have in flight sims. But at the very end of the day, the gameplay is flying the aircraft, okay? And it is a highly successful genre of gaming. So when people look at Star Citizen and, says, and say, there's no game there, it, it makes me wonder, don't they get it? Do they see what's actually going on here? I wish more of the naysayers would play the game and not just jump in and say, oh, this is broken, that's broken, this is broken, because we know it's an alpha and we understand it's taking way too long to make, but what's there right now is actually it's actually fun to play. And there was a long time I was part of those naysayers and you saw me disappear from Star Citizen for a while. And I've already explained why that happened, but I've been back for a few months now and all I have to say is every day I go in the game, I have a great time. Every day when I have a bug, I get past it and I get back into the game and I still have a great game. So CIG is continuing to evolve out the gameplay inside of Star Citizen. And one of the most important elements that Chris Roberts wanted in this game was to physicalize most of the things that went on in the game. 
So right now, when you go to an outpost and you pay for the cargo that you're going to be loading onto your system, you pay, you immediately run outside, and mysteriously, as if by magic, there's your cargo. Pretty cool, right? Well, not really, because that's not what they want in the game. So in two patches, 3.11, one of the things I'm most excited about is we are going to have, yes, that's it. We're going to have two things that are going to make hauling and mining much easier, more interesting, and more interactive than they were before. So we're going to have the addition of cargo decks and refinery decks at most of our spaceports. At least I hope so. My fingers are crossed for that. But we will hear more about that as we get closer to 3.11. And I think this is a really, really, really big deal. And I can't wait for this to happen. And 3.10, what's coming out very soon, there's a lot of things that are being updated here. And I can go over many of them with you. But I'm going to say one of the most intriguing ones to me right now is the fixes that they're doing to turrets and fixed weapons. That right there is going to make that emergent gameplay so much better. It's also going to make some of the vessels that have those big size four weapon slots, like the Buccaneer, actually be more viable. Currently in the verse, the minute you see a big weapon that's fixed, the first thing that you do is throw a gimbal on there and throw a size lower weapon on that mount. So you're always going down a weapon level, and that reduces the lethality of your ship. The devs are saying that the fixes they're making the turrets and fixed weapons are actually making them viable. They talked about killing tons of ships. I mean, it was a little bit more specific than that in just a few minutes with the turrets. So I'm very excited about this one element. There's other things in 3.10 that I'm excited for, and we can go through the whole list, but I'm going to leave you to look through it. And I'm going to talk about the last thing, the one thing that makes me excited. I'm an explorer. I like to go places. I like to seek out vistas and places that people haven't seen. I take a lot of screenshots. Improvements to height mapping and textures are going to give us a more randomized, diverse setting for each one of the planets and for each one of the moons. So you're going to have more varied elevations and the, the water is going to look amazing and react to wind. I'm excited about that because that's the type of things that I'm looking for in the game when I play by myself. And new weapons, new ships, new blah, blah, blah. You know what it's like. It happens with every patch. But I look for those little things in each patch that are really going to change the way I feel about the game. So I'll talk about a few more of these as time goes on. And as I get the patch in round one, I can't wait for that because 3.9, I, I want it gone. <laughs> it should be the patch that we don't name. It should be the patch we forget forever. Between 30 Ks and missing characters and doubling up ships, I'm done with it. I want to move past it and get into a patch that hopefully CIG can roll out without issue. So Cosmic Cat is my test account. This is the account that I use to see what it will be like for someone starting fresh in the game with minimal ships and minimal UEC. I started this account with one ship, a Pisces, and with about 15K, I believe it is, just from various things that actually came to me over the years because Cosmic Cat was started way, way, way back in 2013. So it does have an LX on it, but the LX is not viable right now. So I started my way up the ladder by running box missions. I ran enough box missions to take a look and say, all right, maybe I can use that free freelancer that's in my inventory. So everybody has been granted a free freelancer because of all the 30 Ks that have been going on. So you get into that freelancer, you start making runs, whether it be scrap between a rest stop and Port Olisar, or if you really want to take risks, like I am right now, running Laranite from Ariel over to Lorville. Now I'm going to tell you this right now. 
Trading in the game currently is risk. It's not something I'm telling people to do. It can be very rewarding. With great risk comes great reward. But it could also frustrate you so bad that you want to throw your controller, your mouse, your keyboard, or your computer out the window, whatever it might be. And this is one of the problems with one of the backbones of Star Citizen. Trading is a backbone profession. It is the profession that's going to keep the economy running. And it's the profession that some people are here to do. I have friends like Mover Marcus, who has Colonial Moving. I mean, you remember Colonial Movers if you've been watching any of the Star Citizen videos forever. They are amazing. And right now, trading is about as scary as a rickety old roller coaster, where you know it can fall off the track at some point in the future, but you still want the thrill of doing it. And that shouldn't be what trading is. Trading should really just be, I just need to make some extra money, so let me go out and just trade. And honestly, the job that's actually become the easy job is bounty hunting. And not bounty hunting other players, but bounty hunting NPCs. You can get in your ship, you well equip it, you go out, you're making 2,000 to 2,500 per run, plus a little bit more if you have the call to arms, call to arms on. But trading is supposed to be the one where you make a lot of money. It takes a little while. There's a little bit of tediousness in it, like running from Hurston to Ariel, and then taking the few minutes that it takes to get from the warp in point to landing, running inside, getting your stuff, getting back to your ship and going home. So there is this tediousness of it, and then you finally get home, and you gotta get out of your ship, get through the spaceport, get to the railroad, take the train, get to the central business district, and sell your wares. Now, it sounds like a lot, it sounds crazy, but it's fun. However, I'm doing something I guide people against every time. Through the magic of a quick cut, we're landing over here at HDMS Lathan. There's two of these outposts on Ariel. There's Lathan, there's Bezdek. And they both have exactly the same items for sale. There's absolutely no way you're gonna know which one has more, which one's selling it for less, because that's what you wanna do here. You wanna buy it for less, and you wanna have a bunch of it to go with you. I'd already done a bunch of runs today. This was earlier this morning. Today is the 17th of June. And I found at one point, 23 UEC for Laranite. Now normally I'd be doing this in my freelancer because I have a rule. My rule is very specific to me because I don't like throwing computer parts out the window when I get frustrated from a 30K that has killed my profit on a run. So my rule is generally have four times as much cash as you can put in your hold. In other words, if I have 400,000 UEC, my hold should only hold 100,000. So I would be using a Cutlass or I'd be using a Freelancer. But that's not what I'm doing here. What I'm doing here is I'm doing what I tell people not to do. This is the part of trading that I kind of, I, I don't know. I think I'm a the real seeker in a bad way because a 40K could come at any time, or a 30k, could come at any time between now and when we land at Lorville. Thank God it's easier to land today because that would have been another thing that we would have had to deal with. But I've put 240k into this constellation, 96 SCU, or 9600 CU, I guess that's what it is, of Laranite. Now I have many things that could happen to me on the way back. There are bugs that could just cause your ship to blow up in mid space. It happened to me earlier in the morning, but on an empty hull. I had nothing in my ship. I was doing runs between CRU L5 and Port Olisar. All I was running back and forth was scrap, or not back and forth, from 
the rest stop to Port Alisar, and I was making eight to 10K per run. That is gonna take me years to get to where I need to be if I wanna get the next ship in line, which is gonna be the Freelancer Max, which I affectionately call the Fat Lancer. So it is possible that your ship could just blow up in mid-air. The second thing that could happen, and is more or less, it's more likely to happen on busy days when people have nothing better to do than go out and grief. And I'm okay with griefers in the game because there's a system to keep them from griefing, and that's the bounties, which forces them into a state of either being chased all over the maps or having to do time if they're shot down. The third thing that could happen is pirates could interdict you between Ariel and over here at Hurston. And if pirates do interdict you, I say just haul butt. Just put the pedal to the metal and outrun them because you can. And the minute that their quantum displacement drive, whatever you call it, they're, they're jamming your quantum drive, the minute that ends, just warp, just quantum jump right into the Hurston system or into Hur Hurston's orbit. So at this point, you have another thing that could go on. There is a bug that happens occasionally. And that bug happens when you don't use an orbital marker to go to before you land at the city that you're aiming at. It has happened to me in my 600i and in my Constellation Phoenix on my Batgirl account. And that is when you jump from orbit straight to either Area 18 or Lorville, it'll put you into an upside down position where you slam into the ground at the very end of your quantum jump and your ship will explode. I've seen this happen to other people before. It's happened to me a couple of times and it's not fun. But what I can tell you is none of that happens here. I get lucky. And through the magic of another cut, we're here landing at Lorville. And this is where you can have two other things that can happen to you. If you're not very careful, you could fly into the barrier, into the restricted area, and get sent on a couple of autopilots up. And if you get frustrated, you can get killed. The other thing that could happen here is another spacecraft, another pilot could come and ram you and end your day. None of that happened to me today, but all these are risks when you're running cargo today. And a few of them are always going to be risks. There's always going to be griefers, and there's always going to be a way to take care of them, and it's going to be part of the game. And I do like the fact that with great risk comes great reward. Trading in Star Citizen right now is kind of an edge-of-your-seat occupation, and it's not supposed to be. But I think that's what has me intrigued with it. Usually with trading, I do it because I have to make money. I mean, I remember way back in the day, I was playing Elite Dangerous. I remember way back in the day, it came out in 2012, 2013, 2014, maybe 2015, I have no idea. But I was trying to get an Imperial, oh God, what was the name of it? The one that looks like the duck. Everything starts with a C. There's a courier, a cutter, uh, whatever the middle one was, and you needed to get to a rank of baron. I had to do so much trading, and, and it, it just bored the bejesus out of me because in that game, everything is done with menus. When you land, a menu comes up, and you have to work through the menu to sell and buy, to get your missions, whatever it is. It works. It was fun at the time, so I'm not cunning on it because I really liked that game. And I don't dislike it right now, I just like Star Citizen more. I've landed. I'm making my way through Tisa Spaceport and I'm running over to find the railroad that's gonna get me over to where I could sell my stuff. All right, this sounds tedious, and some people are gonna be naysayers here and say, this is what's so ridiculous about the game. 
but it's not. Yes, it does take time away from me, but I'm going to put it to you two ways. If a developer has in their head how much money you make on a run, they have that set to a time. How long does it take for you to make that money? Cut that time down that it takes you to get the flying your ship out, getting your stuff, flying back, landing, and getting to the central business to sell it. Cut that out of it. And the profits that you make from the run will probably be cut down too. Because it's a whole process of trying to make things equal out. The economy is a very, very, very difficult thing for developers to keep going. Because there could be runaway inflation if they don't find a way to pull money out of the system. Which is why LTI breaks the economy so much. But in the long run, I really think it's not going to matter much because we're going to have landing fees and fuel and repair and cargo insurance and um, upgrade insurance because the LTI only covers the hull. There's going to be so many ways to get money out of it. Now they're forcing us to eat and drink. So they have ways to do it. And I'm sure there will be rent on the habitats that we will be owning. So there's a lot of ways they're going to get it out. But the, the economy is a very, very special thing. But this is my downtime. This is my time where I've been sitting on the edge of my seat, nervous, sweating at times, white knuckled on the stick and the throttle, just wondering, is there going to be a 30K? Am I going to get jumped? Is someone going to pad ram me? Am I going to accidentally fly into the side of a building? And I get to the very end. I get here. And I walk up to this gorgeous black onyx area with gold trim and see the gold statues. And, you know, I'm running right now and um, I just want to see how much I make. I spent 240000 on this run. I think it was... 9600 CU, right? Is that what it is? And I get to come back here and find out what my reward is for having my heart rate elevated to 110 to 120 beats per minute sometimes because I was so fearful something was going to go wrong. Is this wrong? Am I masochistic for liking trading? But this is trading in Star Citizen. And I like it all of a sudden. I wonder what's going to happen when 30Ks are gone and griefing stops a little bit because there's more system. So we're back. And what's the big word? How much did we make? We click on it. And what is it? 296,500 credits. Oh my lord. Is that really 50, 56,000 that we just made? Am I doing that right? Holy moly. I rented this ship for 70K. I have done five runs in it already today. I think it is more than worth renting a ship if the servers are going to be this stable, which is what I was trying to say. I'm pretty happy. All right, folks, that's all I got for you today. I went a little bit over it, and I'm sorry about that because I got excited about this last part. For those of you that are subscribers, please remember to click that notification icon. And for those of you coming on to be subscribers, thank you so much, and please push on that notification icon. If you do like the video, please click the thumbs up button below. It will really help this video get out there and be noticed and be sent to more people so I could have even more viewers. Thank you. If you want to help out the channel a little bit more, I do have a Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash Batgirl. Giving as little as $1 a month, people, it helps. And for those of you that are already given, thank you so much. I'm humbled by your confidence in me. And with that said, folks, you all be safe out there and I will talk to you soon.
Thank you so much for watching my videos. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left. You can support the channel by going to Patreon by clicking the button in the upper right. On the left, you'll see my latest video. And on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.